Welcome back to Bo and Kirsten's Backcountry Kitchen. Today, we're gonna to be talking birthday cake in the backcountry. And I know you're sitting back there thinking, that woman is in her kitchen. But don't you worry, we're gonna to get to it. So the first stages of cooking a cake successfully in the backcountry start at home. I'm gonna walk you through the prep. Today, we're gonna to be making glazed poppy seed bread. It is more of a cake than a bread, but we call it a bread because it makes us feel healthier. But it's a cake. So what you're gonna to need to start with is a bunch of stuff. <laughs> First thing that we're gonna start with is a Ziploc bag. We're gonna put all of our dry ingredients into it. So we're gonna be dumping two and a quarter cup of flour. That was wrong. This is three cups of flour. <clears throat> I'm gonna try that again. Here's our Ziploc bag. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we're gonna be doing is putting all of our dry ingredients into this bag. First goes in three cups of all-purpose white flour. The next thing that we're gonna be adding in is a cup. The next thing that we're gonna be adding in is a cup and, oh my gosh, I did it wrong again. <clears throat> and we're gonna restart. The next thing, you might wanna get some close-ups because this could be real broken up. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna add is two cups and a quarter of sugar. I still said that weird. We're gonna be putting in two and a quarter cups of white granulated sugar. And then we're gonna be putting in a teaspoon and a half of baking powder and a teaspoon and a half of all-purpose salt. You can also use sea salt if you prefer. All right, there are our dry ingredients. We're gonna just zip that up and then we will mix that. As it's in your backpack, it's gonna mix itself, but just to be safe that it's really nice and mixed, this is how we whisk it together. <laughs> All right, now our dry ingredients are combined. When we get back up there, you know, when we're on the top of the mountain, we're gonna mix them up again. All right, dry ingredients are ready to go. The next thing that we're gonna do is our wet ingredients. And so you want to find yourself an arrangement of really liquid tight containers. I love Nalgene brand. They come in all sorts of different sizes and shapes and they're, they're pretty safe to use with liquids. Um, and then you can reuse them while you're up there. Also, if you're a mom, you might have some other strange items for baby food. So I like to just use anything that I know is gonna be watertight for my liquids. So, we need a cup and a half of milk. And I'm gonna put it in this one because milk needs to stay cold, right? Milk is gonna be your hardest one to figure out. So if you are going adventuring somewhere warm, you may have to do a powdered milk substitute instead of real milk. But if you can figure out how to do real milk, I suggest it, it works out better in your recipe. Doesn't matter what type of milk you use, you can use skim, whole, 2%, doesn't matter what type of milk you use. All right, we've got that in our container. I'm gonna seal that up nice and watertight, and it can stay cold because it's in a refrigerated bottle. The next thing that we're gonna do is oil, and not that you wanna reuse this once you get up there with a bunch of oil in it, but you can if you like that. So you can use any type of oil. Today I'm using an olive oil, but the recipe that I usually use calls for vegetable oil. Oils are pretty universal. You're gonna get a little bit of differentiation in your uh, smoke point. So if for some reason you decide to burn your cake, you're gonna be causing some, some cancer causing cells. <laughs> or, yeah, anyways, you can research that if you want. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna be doing is putting our extracts into another one. So we're going to be using almond extract and vanilla extract. And so we don't have to measure them, you can just take these bottles if you want to and measure it out while you're there, but it's so much easier if you have it pre-measured out. So we're gonna be doing a teaspoon and a half of each. You probably can't see. My bad. Teaspoon and a half. I've never had any problems mixing my extracts before, um, but if you're worried about it, you can do them in separate containers. All right, so and we're gonna do a teaspoon and a half of vanilla. And then if you don't have a way to do real butter, if it's too warm where you are, then you're gonna use a teaspoon and a half of butter extract in there as well. But like I said, I'm gonna use real butter because we live in a cold place and butter rarely melts here. So we've got our extracts ready and our liquids ready. Next, moving on to our butter. 
So butter you can throw in a Ziploc if you want. Um, if you are worried it's gonna melt, you can put it into something that's more melt proof and, and uh, sealable for moisture. That's gonna be just fine for what we're doing today. All right, and the last one is poppy seeds. So you're gonna be putting three tablespoons of poppy seed into your recipe. So we're gonna just toss those in a Ziploc. Those are ready to go. Set that with my dry stuff. The last, well, milk is tricky, but this one is trickier, <laughs> eggs. So today I'm going to just go ahead and pre-break them. You should always break your eggs on a flat surface, especially when you're going to be taking them into the back country. You don't want to introduce any extra bacteria since they're going to be stored possibly without refrigeration for the day or whenever you're planning on using them. So I always crack them on a flat surface to save yourself from that. And then we're gonna add these eggs into a container of sorts. So today, I can't remember what I had planned to put them in. Ah, <laughs> this one. All right, so today we're gonna to be putting them into this little six ounce container. I'm gonna beat them up before I put them in because it'll make it easier to, to put them into my container. So with a fork, you just wanna break them up they don't need to be really whipped at this point. Just need to break them up enough that you can get them down into your container. And I'm infamous for spilling. How do we do? Oh my gosh, I think I did it. All right, so eggs are ready to go. They're in a nice uh, container that they're not gonna spill. Our last step, you can buy these Ziplocs, which are my all-time favorite thing. I don't know if I've shown you to them before, but this is a two-gallon size, and it's wonderful and magical, and I use them all of the time. All of this stuff can go into one bag. A lot of the time I prep this meal, meal, I prep this dessert for other people, and all they have to do is just dump it together. So whether you're prepping this for yourself or for someone else, if you put it all into one bag, they know exactly what is supposed to go into their recipe. There's no guessing. From this point, you can throw that into a backpack, you can put it onto an animal, you can put it in your car, wherever it is ready to go. One last thing that we want to have as far as preparations are our pans. And our pans come with just a little bit of work. Number one, finding them. So I have linked it down below for you to find these pans. They're a mini cake size, or mini, mini bread pan size, and they're made out of silicone. So I don't know if you can see how bendy they are, but this is vital in getting them to fit into the can cooker easily. So we're gonna be using this can cooker and these silicone pans, and these fit into there so easily, so nicely, and that way you don't burn your fingers, you're not at, at risk for burning yourself. So if you have another pan that fits into your can cooker that you're comfortable with, you can do something else. But before I ever leave my kitchen, I cut just some little liners to go down in the bottom of those, and then I stack them together. So just a little bit to go down into the bottom. Did not line that up very well, did I? Just a little bit in the bottom. They are silicone, so things aren't gonna stick very easily to them, but it might stick a little bit. So the last thing that we're gonna do, you can use butter, you can use, if you take cooking spray, you can do that or if you wanna use like a vegetable oil or whatever to coat the sides of your pan, I just suggest using something. So today I'm gonna to use shortening. I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there. You don't need a ton because what you pack in and don't use, you have to pack back out, right? So we don't want like a ton in there, but enough to coat three pans. And I like to just throw my paper towel in there. So I don't have to look for it. I've just got it with me. I'm gonna tuck that down into there and that is ready to go as well. All right, so we've got all of our stuff ready. Man. Now I'm gonna show you how to cook it. Because the weather is just terrible outside, I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna cook it inside. Number one, so you can hear me. Number two, so I don't freeze stuff. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do, we are going to melt our butter because we're gonna need melted butter in our recipe. So we're gonna pull everything out. Oh, it traveled so well. <laughs> Just kidding. Pull everything out of our Ziploc. 
I'm gonna get our butter, our butter out. Now this might take a little bit of forethought, so maybe think about this in your kitchen preparations. Today I'm gonna get my cooker going and then I'm gonna melt it over the flame in a, in a nice um, heat stable measuring cup. I don't know if that's what you call it, but today that's what we're calling it, so. All right. So I'm gonna just put this right here. Please don't burn yourself when you're doing this. Um, I'm actually gonna put the butter in there first. That makes more sense, huh? Okay, so we are gonna get this melted down in there. And then when that is melted, we are gonna add it to our other wet ingredients. All right, our butter is nice and melty. So we're gonna just set that aside. As long as your wind isn't blowing, hopefully it will stay nice and melted for you. Okay, remember that dry mixture? We're gonna Gonna shake it up, get it nice and mixed, and then we're gonna start adding stuff to this. We're gonna get it opened up, ready to go. If you're, if you're making this at your house, you would have the luxury of doing a third of the milk and half of the eggs and you know doing things alternately and mixing in between. But because we're sitting on the side of a mountain, we're not gonna be doing that. So we're gonna mix our eggs in with our oil and we're gonna shake it up. And then we're gonna put about half of it into our flour, we're gonna shake it, stir it, and then we're gonna do about half the milk. So it won't be quite as pretty. If you don't wanna waste the time doing that, just throw it all in there and mix it up. It's gonna work just fine. So shake that, put about half of it in there. Do a little bit of stirring, seal it up. Ooh, don't seal it, it puffs out the sides. Stir that up a little bit. Put in half the milk. All right, in the middle of this process, or even after you have your butter melted, if you notice, my flame is still going over here, so we're gonna get the can cooker ready while we're gonna finish stirring this up. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set your can cooker on your heat. You're gonna add about a cup of water to it. If it ever runs out of water, you will ruin your pan. So you wanna make sure that you always have some liquid in the bottom. Then we're gonna add the wire racks. It comes with two wire racks, half size each. We're gonna stick those down in there. And while we are finishing our cake, that will be heating up so it's ready when we need it ready. We're gonna put the lid on. That will help it to heat up a little faster. All right, so we're gonna go back to adding and stirring. All right, so after you get the first halves in there, it's gonna be kind of like Play-Doh. You wanna just kind of work it until it's quite even in there. And then we're gonna put the rest of our stuff in. Put the rest of our eggs in, stir, and then the rest of our milk in and stir. And you can see that I just used the same Ziploc that the dry ingredients were in. There's no need to pack yourself an extra Ziploc unless you want to. This recipe is gonna fill up about four of our bread pans. So you have to kind of think ahead. Either you're gonna to have to do two of this, um, cook the first two and then do another set, or you're gonna split your recipe in half. Now, as you start to look at your recipe, you're gonna to think to yourself, wait a minute, three eggs, how you split three eggs in half. And there's a couple ways you can do that. Each egg is about two tablespoons so you can either choose to just pack yourself half of six, which is three tablespoons of eggs, or you can just use two whole eggs and it's gonna be fine. Eggs provide structure in cake and lift. So a little bit of more structure and lift isn't gonna hurt you. You know, another tablespoon or two won't hurt anything. All right, so we're gonna get this nice and stirred until it's all really together. You don't need to excessively stir it. You don't need to beat it on the ground just until everything has been moistened in there. Get out all the lumps. All right. So the next thing that we're going to add 
is our extracts. Pour in our extracts, our butter, and all of our poppy seeds. And then give that another stir. So this is what you would call a quick bread. So it doesn't need to be excessively stirred. Another thing about quick breads is that the second that the baking powder starts interacting with your oil or your moisture of any kind, it's gonna start wanting to expand. So you wanna get it into your cooker as quickly as you can from this point. That's why we got our can cooker going to begin with. Um, you could start it even earlier. You know, once you start thinking about cooking, get your can cooker heating up. All right, so I'm gonna get these pans prepped really quickly. We're just gonna put a little bit of shortening on the sides just so they come out nice and clean. And then we're gonna get our batter put in. So like I said, you can do about four of these pans only two fit in at a time. So you can get the other ones kind of sitting around ready. Um, but like I said, with the baking, baking powder, it's gonna start reacting just about instantly when you get it wet. So it's best if you either have two can cookers or you do a half recipe at a time. Today I have the luxury of just putting one into my oven. <laughs> so I am going to just do the two in the can cooker and then use the rest of the batter in, in my oven. So I'm just gonna prepare two pans, put in my bottom liner. And then you have a couple of methods to get your batter out. You can cut a hole in the side if you know that it's gonna fit into your two, two pans. You can use a cup, you can open up the top, however you wanna do it. Today, I'm gonna to use my metal measuring cup that I use to melt my butter in. And I'm gonna fill these up. I'm actually gonna stir that just a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna fill them up to about two thirds of the way. Give it a little bit of room to expand. I get all of my clumps worked out of there. Nobody wants a clumpy cake. So as you can see, my can cooker is actually starting to let off some steam already. It gets hot really quickly, especially when it's only just having to heat up about a cup at a time. Gonna spoon that in until it's two thirds of the way full. These cakes in a can cooker is about like doing them in an instant pot. So it's gonna cook them with steam and heat rather than dry heat like you would in your oven. Oh my goodness, and six hours later, our pans are almost full. All right. Set aside my extra batter. And then I'll show you the difference of one being oven baked and one in the can cooker. All right, so I'm gonna use my paper towel that I did my shortening with. Just clean up the edges of that. We're in the back country. You're allowed to make a mess. All right, pop open this. These get hot really fast. So you may want to have some gloves or keep a pair of tongs or something with you. And I'm gonna get some tongs so I don't burn myself. All right, so I've got some tongs. I'm just gonna lower that down in there. Another option if you don't, if you've forgotten your tongs or forgotten a way to get it down in there without burning yourself, don't heat up the can cooker until your cakes are in. And they're gonna turn out just fine like that. So we're gonna set those down in there, then we're gonna re-add our top, seal it up, and we're gonna cook them for about 45 minutes to an hour. So we'll check them at 30 minutes. Uh-huh, yep, it's a hot lid. All right, so we're gonna seal that up, lock it down, and then I wanna keep my eye on it. See this little steam hole? I want to make sure that I can see light steam coming out of that the whole time it's cooking. 
So if you can't see any steam, turn it up or listen. If you can't hear it boiling in there, that means you need to add water. So for now, we're just gonna look. I can see a little bit of steam and we're gonna let that go for about an hour. In the meantime, we're gonna clean up our kitchen space and we're gonna make a glaze to go on it for when it gets out. All right, we'll check it back in a little bit. All right, while our cakes are cooking, I'm gonna show you a really easy glaze that you can put together. It is optional completely, but it's so yummy. So when you're doing your kitchen prep at home, you wanna to put together this little packet of things. Three quarters cup of sugar, just regular white sugar. That goes into a Ziploc, so it has easy transportation into our backpack or whatever we're packing this into. The next thing that we're gonna do is a teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract, a teaspoon and a half of almond extract, one tablespoon of butter, or a teaspoon and a half of our butter extract. Just eyeball those today. It doesn't have to be an exact science with your glaze. All right, we've got our extracts ready to go. The last thing that we're gonna do is a quarter cup of orange juice. This one, if you packed orange juice on your trip or if we have fresh oranges to squeeze into it, either one works. Just put that into a little container. Make sure that it doesn't leak. There's nothing more frustrating than having something leak on your trip. So you wanna make sure it's nice and, and liquid tight. All right, so when it comes time, when our bread comes out, we're gonna have this all ready to go. We're gonna melt our butter, combine all of our ingredients, our extracts with our melted butter and our orange juice. We're gonna put it all into our sugar, mix it up, and then we're just gonna cut the side of it and pour it on over the top. Um, you can prick your bread with a fork if you want to to give somewhere for that glaze to go if your bread is lifted up and out of the tin. So it's not really a tin when it's made out of silicone, is it? All right, so that is that. Um, we will show you how to apply that glaze when the time comes. All right, it has been about an hour. If you have a higher temperature than me, it might not go quite that long. The longer you go or the hotter you go, the more water you need. So if you're gonna go short amount of time on a low temperature, you don't need very much water. Just kind of gauge it. If you ever stop seeing that steam, put more water in. Even if it's in the middle of your cook, that's totally fine. All right, so the uh, can cooker is a combination of pressure and steam. So it cooks up just a little bit differently than your regular cake in your oven. So I'm excited to show you the difference. Unless I drop it. <gasps> They're slippery. All right. So side by side, we have one. This just came out of our can cooker and we're gonna put a nice glaze on it. And this one just came out of the oven. So there's the difference between them. So this one has been baked with steam and this one has been dry baked. All right, here's our little glaze. I'm going to put all of it into my Ziploc as if we're into the back country. Add our melted butter. Mix it all up and then squeeze it out on top. I'm gonna to use a fork to prick holes in the top of my cakes to allow somewhere for the glaze to be. You want your cakes to be warm when you do this glaze because your sugar is not melted. So you wanna have your glaze ready to go when your cakes come out or at least very close. All right, butter goes in. Mix that up. The warm butter also helps to break up a little bit of that sugar so it's not so grainy on the top. All right, very quickly with a fork, I'm gonna just prick some holes. You could also do this with a knife or anything that you can use to kind of puncture your bread. This will make a mess <laughs> if you're not careful. So make sure to do it somewhere where you're not gonna be attracting bears to your campsite if you're in bear country or rodents or whatever. Just make sure it's on something you can throw away. All right, now I'm just gonna use a little pair of scissors. If you have pocket knife, kitchen knife, whatever you've got 
Just make a little hole in the side of that. Kind of drizzle that on to both of our warm cakes. Now remember, if you did a half recipe of your cake, make sure to do a half recipe of your glaze as well. Otherwise you will have way too much. And there you have it. That's my version of birthday cake in the backcountry. You can also use a box mix cake, which is substantially easier, but it is an option to make fancy desserts in the backcountry. You never knew it, did you? If you would like to get more recipes like this one, let us know, subscribe to our channel or go ahead and check out these videos that we've linked for you up above. We'll see you guys next time.